Welcome to Selling Power's Daily Report. Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwantner, and today I would like you to meet Seth Godin. He's America's number one marketing guru. Seth, welcome to Selling Power. Thank you for having me. Uh, can we start with something really basic? Um, how do you define the word marketing? What does that mean? I think that marketing is the art of telling a story to a consumer that they want to hear, that lets them persuade themselves that they want to buy something. And inherent in that story is you have to have something that they want. You can't force it on them. Number two is you have to be authentic. You have to tell them the truth. You can't have a story that's a fraud. And number three, your story has to be so remarkable that people want to tell it to other people. And when you put all those pieces together, that's what a marketer does for a living. Do you make a distinction between marketing to consumers versus marketing to businesses? I think that business people are just consumers who are spending somebody else's money. So if you're the person who's buying ball bearings at the Ford Motor Company, you're still acting like a consumer. You're not making totally rational decisions. You're making decisions based on how you feel about the company, how you feel about the person selling to you, about what your boss wants. All of those go into the mix. So I think it's a mistake to separate the two. I think they're very similar. Now, when you talk about those three principles, uh, the one that sticks out the most is, is re being remarkable. Can you give me an example? In our culture today, there are so many choices so many alternatives that you don't have to pick anything. If that company disappeared, you would just pick an alternative. Number two is there's so much noise in our culture, you don't have to notice anything you don't want to. You don't have to watch a commercial that you don't want to. So the magic word here is remarkable. When something is remarkable, by definition it means worth remarking on, then someone's going to talk about it. So Starbucks is a fine example. I have too many Starbucks stories, but here's one. They sold coffee, different coffee, coffee that some people found bitter, coffee that some people found exceptional. But what they did was they really sold couches. That when Starbucks opened, they opened a coffee shop, a cafe, a place with couches. And so person A would say to person B, I'll meet you at Starbucks. And that sentence is Starbucks' entire marketing strategy because the first person loved the Italian coffee, they would cross the street to get it, they were a coffee addict, they were willing to seek it out. But the second person came to see the first person, and that's where the remarkable thing comes in. Can you give me an example on marketing to business that's similar to the Starbucks idea? Sure, and the business example is even more imperative because you can't run TV ads to each businesses. Junk mail doesn't work to businesses, and selling to businesses, sending out a sales guy, it's 300, 400 bucks a call, it's too expensive. So let me tell you about the Hard Manufacturing Company. Hard makes hospital cribs. The typical hospital crib is for a really sick kid, and it costs $1,000. Now, Hard has 85 or 90% market share, so how are they gonna grow? A hospital crib lasts forever. So what they did was they went to the Dorn Becker Children's Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio, and they said to the nurses there, they're the ones who pick, which cribs to buy. Design any crib you can imagine. Well, they got a little carried away and they designed an $11,000 crib. A crib with a supercomputer inside, a digital scale, so that if there's a really sick child in the crib, you don't have to take it out to weigh it five times a day. Instead, you can weigh the child with all the wires and things hooked up to them in the crib. Well, guess what happened? After the company made the crib, nurses started picking up the phone and calling other nurses, not for money, but for love, and said, this crib saved a kid's life. And so now the Dornbecker is the number one most profitable, number one best-selling crib, not because of a hard sell, but because they made a crib worth talking about. Now, you said earlier that marketing is all about telling a good story. What are the elements that go into a good story? You, you mentioned authenticity and uh, how do you do that? Well, let's start by understanding it's not your story. It's my story. You let me tell myself a story. If I'm the consumer, if I'm the business buyer or a consumer consumer, I am going to buy something because I believe the story. I'd like to talk about fancy feast gourmet cat food. Uh, it smells horrible and is smooth like pate. Well, cat food's not for cats, folks. If cat food were for cats, it would come in mouse flavor that in fact 
People buy fancy, foods, cat, fancy feast cat food for themselves because of the way it makes them feel, because of the story they tell themselves, not because of the cat. And the story is, if you love your cat, if you want to take care of your cat, if you want to prove to your cat that she's worth an extra buck, well, then you'll buy this. That's a story. Well, if it was just Alpo in a smaller can, the story wouldn't resonate. So you need authenticity. It has to be different cat food. It has to be cat food that actually appeals to cats, because otherwise the story would fall on its face. So what we see here is that you have to live the story, breathe the story. All marketers aren't liars. All marketers are truth tellers, because the best stories and the ones that spread are the ones that are actually authentic.